So I'm going to show you how to do like basic manipulations with the scintillation counter and working with S35. Um, so this is our small scintillation counter that we use when we're doing uh, basically experiments and we need to check things routinely as we do experiments to check for contamination. Um, for example, if you're about to bring your tubes over the centrifuge or if you want to check your pipetter to make sure it's not hot before you move on to the next step of the protocol. Um, so there's two power switches for this uh, one for the scintillation counter itself is in the back and on the right. And then there's a second power switch here for the printer. Okay, and so if it's not already on the isotope that you want, basically you just choose by pressing the correct button and it should switch back and forth. Um, and so the first thing that you'll do is start by taking a blank. So you take a uh, swipe paper, put it inside the tube, Fill it with six milliliters of uh, scintillation fluid, cap it, mark it with a number as well as what it is so that you can remember, and then uh, put it inside the machine. So with this, there's a small dot here on the lid, and so you have to push and turn um, until this circle is matched up with this or here. So this is open and this is locked. So you open this up. Put your tube inside the counter, close it, and then press start. So it'll count for a full 40 seconds, and uh, the background reading for this in our lab is typically around uh, what you're seeing here, so between 145 and 180 uh, counts per minute. Okay, and so this is reasonable enough. You can continue to do other things while you are waiting for that to finish counting, just make sure you check it uh, before you move on to the next part. Um, okay, so let's say I've done an experiment. I want to show you now how to clean a pipetter. Um, so usually when you have small contamination, a uh, wipe with water is usually enough to clean it off. And so static electricity can actually also be sort of a problem when you're counting simulation vials. So Typically what I do is I preemptively clean things, and that will help to reduce uh, the need to re-swipe things, because swipes take a long time, and also reduce the static electricity. So you start by just getting a Kim White wet, and you want to clean the business end of the putter first, and um, make sure that you change wipes, because this is most likely to be contaminated, and the rest of it should be less so. So you don't want to clean this and then bring contamination to the rest of the putter. So clean the front, not clean the body. And at the same time, I'm also going to clean uh, the pipette tip box. Okay. So in terms of how much uh, a particular swipe can handle, um, the general rule of thumb is that one swipe can cover one square meter of surface area. And so obviously you couldn't use one swipe to check everything on the lab. Um, similarly, you can't use one swipe to check everything on your workbench. Uh, so I'm going to start by, uh, and it's also important to sort of pump it up and down just in case there's anything inside the barrel. It'll get spit out onto the paper and then you'll know. Um, so I did that onto the front side. Now I'm going to use the opposite side of the paper to swipe the rest of my pet. and also swipe the box. So top, sides, and then last thing is the bottom. Okay. Paper into the tube. Fill the tube. Label it. Okay. Again, push down and turn to lock, and then uh, you can either push start or you can push next. Doesn't matter. Okay. So again, we're looking for things that are three times above background. So background in the lab, like I said, is around 145. On this particular day, it's closer to uh, 144, whatever. Um, 
I found that this tends to be more sensitive, so if you get counts that are above 220, it's usually worth reswiping or cleaning and reswiping. Um, so this looks pretty good. Um, right, so the final count is 153. That's pretty close to background, which is 144, so these are considered to be clean. So at this point, I can move these off of the radioactive bench and put them somewhere else. Uh, next, I want to show you how to clean the work area, how to check the work area. So whenever you're working, you should always have an additional piece of bench paper down that's labeled with the isotope that you're working with. Um, and so. If this ever gets hot, you can fold it all up, put it in the waste drum, and get a new one. Um, otherwise, you can reuse it. So I'm going to start by swiping the work side of the paper. The back side. The other back side. This part. This part. So in the process, I've swiped the entire surface of this. thing that you want to do before you finish working for the day is check your salt. Um, so every time you come into the area or leave the area, you need to check yourself, your shoes, and then the floor underneath where you're working. So I'm going to start by checking myself. I'm going to start with my lab coat. So starting with the front of my lab coat, the sleeves, Um, we also do a lot of like reaching down to pick stuff out and then standing up again. So we'll also do the back of my lab coat because it's lost and touch the floor. swiping my lab coat, now I'm going to swipe my pants. So I'm swiping the front of my pant legs, back of my pant legs, tops of my shoes, as well as the sole of my shoes. You can also do your gloves, right? So you want to check your fingers as well as the palms. Obviously, if you're working in more than just this area, right, you're walking around the lab, then you would check more of the floor where you're actually working. Okay, so at this point, 
point I've checked. Um, the pipetter, the working mat that I was using, the bench, and my coat. So far everything is fine. So I'm going to put the mat back in the cupboard. Um, and then finish off by reading my shoes, which are right now, and then reading the floor. Okay. And then when you're completely finished working, you should debuff. Um, so we're going to put this in the cupboard. Always make sure to debug over the work area just in case your gloves were contaminated and they throw aerosols. You want it to be over the workbench. So debug by reaching inside, turning it inside out, throw this in the waste container, and close the cabinet. Also make sure to turn off the installation camera.